All right, lads, with this, the sixth anniversary is coming upon us. This is basically the pre-release campaign that is going to take us right on into the anniversary live stream where Koyanskaya and the rest of the goodies are going to release. Now, don't be alarmed that these dates are a little bit weird. This is just the Japanese version of the pre-release campaign. Everything is the exact same as what we've got going on. Our in-game news that basically has all the same details. I just find it easier to navigate things on like a web page. The only thing that looks like it's going to be a little bit different is that we're not going to get all these random live streams but the first good thing that i can confirm is that it does look like we're going to be getting all of these saint quartz over here this is an additional 60 saint quartz that we're going to get just from like a like and retweet campaign over on twitter so that in and of itself is already a really really good start they were like hey man you enjoy that 30 saint quartz we just gave you for free how about you take another 60 so it's already shaping up to be a real banger celebration right like as i kind of did in my uh how many saint quartz will you on average be getting before the anniversary starts this is like some of the massive saint quartz pools we're starting to get in oh i guess these are the smaller ones but the big massive ones are still to come but if you're excited for the anniversary make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel because i'll be covering everything in the anniversary as I've already kind of started covering stuff over there, but you're not going to miss anything if you subscribe to the channel because I'll keep you up to date on both the NA and JP version of the game, but it kind of looks like things are going to be a little bit more hyped over here on NA than they are on JP. I say that and then watch them drop a crazy event over there. That's just the most ballistically crazy thing you've ever seen in your entire life. I don't think they're going to do that, but they could. Who knows? I'll hold my tongue on that one, but First and foremost, we got a summoning campaign after the 60 Saint Quartz that are going to come. Uh, those should actually come around the time that Koyanskaya actually drops because they're giving us time to actually like and share and everything. So we should be getting that in a little bit, but this is going to be coming in the next couple of days. I believe this is actually going to be dropping uh, actually now as i'm recording this video it should be going live and so this is just going to be the sherlock band it's going to have a couple of you know older ce's on here i don't have to tell you to not summon on this banner you can't be this much of a dingus and go summon on the sherlock banner when koyanskaya is quite literally what like five days away right now it's insane right like you cannot be wasting your saying quartz on this banner sherlock sure he is a good servant i think he's rather solid but i've given him the title of like the best servant you'll never use, right? Because while his NP is really crazy and they're giving him some upgrades, right, to make him a bit better, you're still just not gonna use him over someone like, I don't know, Castoria, Lady Avalon, Tamamo, right? You're gonna use all of these other servants over Sherlock. I mean, he's fun to use and he's good. He can make some difficult fights very easy by giving everybody Pierce Invul and Pierce Defense, basically letting you bypass pretty much everything, right? But you're probably not going to use him. You're probably just gonna like slap a Pierce Invul CE on one of your servants and then just do double Castoria anyway, or I guess double Koyanskaya when she drops. So good servant but just not nearly as good or as hype as koyanskaya i don't know if you're the one guy summoning on sherlock let me know in the comments down below i would love to be like that is sherlock's strongest fan right there that is his only and strongest fan but you know what if you're gonna summon for it more power to you now we're gonna talk about the memorial quest in just a second here but i do want to kind of mention that we will be getting uh two picks for these ce's over here now some of them are just the normal outfits for the servant like you can see that voyager kind of looks the same you can see that nobukasu just has like his ascension uh thing going on but then some of them are really really sick like i think the doman one is really cool i think the astolfo one looks good the ushi one ironically enough is just now the chinese versions like censored version of ushi i kind of do want this as a costume on a little bit of a side note but like ishtar's got a really good looking costume moriarty's i think looks really good camilla's look good Mozart, I don't know who cooked this up, but this one looks real cool. Like for a random bronze servant that nobody uses, they cooked a really cool looking outfit over here. Like bro looks like he should be Solomon, right? <laughs> like dude looks absolutely crazy, but I'm probably not going to pick it, unfortunately. But these are all really, really cool. They don't really do a whole lot. Like as you can see, it's like, oh, here's 10 friend points. That's Cool and all, I don't think anybody really cares that much about friend points. So I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Just pick the ones that you like. Don't worry about like, oh my goodness, I gotta pick one for the meta. It's like, no, just pick the two you like. Because I think that's the hardest decision is picking only two of them. Because most of these for every anniversary look really good. Now we have the memorial quest. Now, for the most part, 
these are going to be fairly easy, just going to be some free tickets because it's just taking some of the older boss fights from the Singularities and beefing them up a little bit. But there are going to be some difficult fights in here. If you do find yourself struggling on, I don't know, any of these memorial quests, for one, I'll probably clear them on stream. So if you want to watch me clear them with various team comps, because I believe these are repeatable, you could do them as many times as you want. I could try to do that for you guys. I'll definitely help people out with that. But if you can't make it to the streams, which are every weekday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that is linked down in the description down below, my Discord's also in the description. So if you're having a really hard time and you're like, oh, I really can't find a way to beat Goatia. He's just too strong. I, I did it once, but I can't do it a second time, right? He's insurmountable, right? Someone in the Discord can definitely help you out uh, with a team build if I myself am not available. So we'll just kind of go through some of these. Uh, the first one, this is actually baby food, bro. I'm pretty sure you could solo this with a Rosh. <laughs> like, this is the easiest thing of all time. This is still not all that difficult. I mean, this Romulus is a little bit beefier, but this is nothing you haven't faced in the average event node, right? This is a farming node right here. This is not all that difficult. Drake starts to get a little bit beefy, but if you're really struggling all that bad, just find a friend, Jack, and she'll make light work out of Drake over here. Mordred, also not super difficult. Literally bring any archer you can find and they'll make quick work of uh, Mordred over here. Even your own Uriel, even without the male special damage mod, can probably mop up this Mordred quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now, the demon pillars are where things might get a little annoying for accounts that aren't as good because, you know, if you're not expecting it, you don't know that, oh, well, these guys are like weak to the night classes, right? you know, like, or I guess they're strong against the knight classes and they're weak against the uh, cavalry classes, right? That being your rider, caster, assassins, and berserkers, you might run in there and get clapped up one time if you don't know about it, but that's why I'm here. I'm telling you about it. Bring your horsemen, guys. Bring these. They will make quick work of these people. Uh, Ra can be a little annoying because I believe he heals. Like, he has a skill that uh, heals him every single turn, and so if your box isn't as strong, it might be a little bit more difficult, but, um, you know, surely you could still bring even a friend, uh, Chi Shi Huang or a Ku Alter. You could bring a Super Orion friend and they should be able to mop these guys up because they're not like even the uh, the Super Orion one. I imagine his crits will bypass the class disadvantage, right? Like I imagine you could just chew through this with him because the servants we have nowadays are just too good. Unfortunately, like Ra doesn't have the best things for you to take advantage of because Super Large is like Arthur's thing and... <laughs> I don't think ain't nobody going to be using Arthur, and he doesn't even have the whole king trait because he's well, not Ozymandias, right? Spoiler alert if you haven't gone through Camelot yet, you know, I spoiled that for you, but they're not all that difficult. They're just kind of beefy. This will be kind of like the first test for weaker boxes, but if you're a veteran, you can shut these guys down. They're not going to be all that difficult. This one I think is just kind of neat. I wish we would get to fight Tiamat again with like break bars and stuff. I think that would have been really cool, but you could pretty much clap this up the same way you did it the first time with uh, King Hassan over here because you could just insta-kill these people. Or you could bring, you know, whatever, just good AoE servant and just start slowly cleaning through these dudes. It's not super, super difficult. Goatia might be where some people actually do struggle because it's been a long time. I understand people might forget. Don't forget that he will, like, absolutely destroy your entire front line, right? Like, he'll do the whole thing where it's like, oh, he's going to just destroy your entire front line of your party with an NP. Uh, so make sure you, you do not put your best guys at the front, right? Because what he does is he charges the max, gets Pierce Invul, and then, you know, increases his own NP damage, right? So, like, he does insane amount of damage. Like, the increasing the NP damage three times is supposed to basically guarantee that no matter who he's attacking, he's going to obliterate. Now, there's a few ways you could try to take advantage of this. One, the obvious thing is just put three servants, you're fine, which is getting RKO'd in the front line, right, and just letting them get obliterated. The second way is you bring Castoria, because this fight, if it was made nowadays, he would remove all of your buffs and then attack, but they gave him Pierce Invincibility because we didn't have Solemn Defense back in the day, and Solemn Defense cannot be pierced by Pierce Invincibility. So if you can fire a Castoria NP right from the get-go, you're going to be able to just survive this no problem, right? You'll be absolutely fine. The only thing to also keep in mind is that over here, he does have three turns where he's basically safe, right? So he's going to fire an NP. It's going to wipe out all of your guys. And then he's also going to be pretty much safe for the next three turns, right? Because this is going to make your noble phantasms and your crits just basically do nothing, right? So as long as you can kind of chew through those first three turns, it'll be smooth sailing from here because this is basically the same Goetia fight that you've already done. And I cleared this with double Merlin 
Quetzalcoatl, right? And while I was intending for Quetzalcoatl to pretty much just beat up Goetia over here, it ended up just being my two Merlins firing their NPs for like 60 turns, not being able to die, and then just kind of slowly punching Goetia to death with the occasional Quetzalcoatl NP. So there's numerous ways to go about it. I mean, you can even use Guts to survive the initial NP. There's numerous different ways to survive it. It's really not all that difficult. You're just probably going to be there for a while because he is a little bit beefy. Now, this is where I think a lot of people are going to have their Vietnam flashbacks because they're seeing Demeter over here and because they don't really change any of these fights for these newer ones because they're already kind of difficult enough as is. Well, their difficulty is already kind of set to current level. You're going to have to do the Demeter thing again. Now, the good thing is, is that if you summon for Morgan, this is real easy to do. I started playing my JP around the time this anniversary dropped. I had Morgan, I had Castoria, and I had Merlin. I put those three together, and I just did a stall strat, and it worked wonders for me in this fight. My Morgan was NP1 on JP, still is, unfortunately, but it was able to uh, make quick work of this fight. I also, on NA, when I cleared this myself, I know not everybody has Kentucky Rider, but that's basically what I did. I just used him to just keep punching Demeter in the face, right? Just He kept slam dunking her with a lot of damage. And we were able to get through it. But the annoying thing for Demeter, if you're not at Lost Belt 5.2 yet, and you're like, hey man, like, why is everybody dreading this fight? She's just annoying because she's really thick. She's got a lot of defense. And she also heals herself by like 50k every single turn. It is like really, really annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. She gives herself so much HP. And then she also just has a lot of defense, right? She is just an annoying fight but you can kind of mitigate it right you could try to bring like defense piercing servants or there's a few defense piercing ce's i believe they're very few and far between they're not as common as like the sure hit or the pierce invul ce's but if you can find one of those that could also help you out but i'd recommend just bringing a servant that has pierce uh defense for instance someone like emia has it he doesn't have advantage against her right because he's an archer and she's a caster over here but you get the general idea. Now, before you say, well, can't I just bring a friend servant that could easily crush this fight? Unfortunately, the other final annoying thing is that Canis just really wants to tag along in this battle. You know, you've been going through all the Lost Belts and she's kind of noticed you doing things and she's like, you know what? This guy seems pretty cool. I'm gonna tag along. And it's the one time that I'm like, no, Canis, I'd prefer if you didn't. I'd prefer if you just hung back and you know, didn't come for this fight because it does feel like the Musashi Shimosa fights where she doesn't really do a whole lot. Now, I will tell you guys, as someone who is now fully caught up on JP, they're getting better at the force support thing. Some of the force supports actually kind of do things now. Some of them, not all of them. Let me let me just throw that out there. But it is getting better. If you're like, man, these force supports are getting really annoying for some of these bosses. I'll at least let you know that there is somewhat of a fix for that going forward, but I'll let you guys discover that one for yourselves. Then finally, the last one we have is the Wodamine fight over here. And this, yeah, you can definitely tell that Wodamine's got a lot going on for him. If you've gotten to Lost Boat 5.2, you know this is a fight that you just got to strap in for. You're going to be here a while. It's not technically all that difficult, right? Like, he has the things where he's like, oh, well, I have, like, three resistances against NPs and three against crits and everything. You just got to start chewing through those. And as you start getting through them it gets easier and easier to start getting through all of his break bars and everything. But the problem is that he resets a lot of his buffs, right? So like you break a bar and then he just gives himself all of his things back and then you break another bar and then he gives all of his buffs back. So it's like, you got to chew through them again. You're just going to be there for a long time. But for the first time, mash is actually pretty useful. Your mash in this fight is actually quite strong. So if you do have your mash leveled as you should, she will actually put in a lot of work in this fight. And I believe I've seen some people try to solo this fight with mash and uh, she does a really, really good job at it. So if you could just back her up with everything if your box is not quite as good you can make work of it that way or you can just bring just a decent team that has good sustainability because you're gonna be here for quite a while but that is basically everything for this pre-release campaign for the na i know it's not technically the pre-release right but it is you know what it's a prelude to the anniversary right? what else do you want me to call it i'm not calling it a commemorative campaign all right this is the pre-release right this is the pre-game before koyanskaya drops and changes everything in fgo but let me know what you guys are looking forward to the most i know a lot of people are just going to be like let me get my 60 saint quartz let me go clap up some of these memorial quests and i'll be on my way kind sir you know and that's going to be a lot of people but regardless i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know which memorial quest you're most looking forward to doing again i'm kind of looking forward to doing the goatia one again i always really did like that fight i felt 
Wilde, who is very uh, good as a climax for FGO. So I'm really looking forward to doing that one again. But let me know all that in the comments down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace, late guys.